Hello friends, welcome to Friends of Max. My name is Hema Bahadur and I'm a customer success architect here at Millsoft. Before we deep dive into exchange best practices, let's take a look at how exchange fits into API lifecycle management. In today's Friends of Max video, we will be discussing all things of exchange, including what it is, how it fits into the API lifecycle as well, what types of assets can be loaded into exchange, how to do the loading, and finally, how to best find the assets in exchange once they are in there. Before we begin, it's important that we level set on what exactly is any point exchange. Exchange is a marketplace with different types of assets. You can basically share, discover, and it's pretty loose. Well, you can think of it like a library where you get different types of books which can be used again and again, and also you can donate those books. Some of these types that Exchange has are connectors, adapters to connect to the applications, templates, so on and so forth. Exchange comes with pre-built templates, assets, common use cases, and integrations which can be readily used by a customer. Customers can also share assets in Exchange. Because they can share and reuse, this is what leads to reusability concept within MuleSoft. So Exchange is basically the center and core of reusability of code and APIs. Before we deep dive into best practices of Exchange, let's take a look at what role Exchange plays in API lifecycle. So if you have been working with MuleSoft any amount of time, you may have seen this diagram before. This is how we at MuleSoft think about DevOps. Firstly, you will notice the design stage on the right hand side here, the prototyping and validation of our API and overall project design. Next, we move into our DevOps lifecycle, which consists of iterations of development and testing, followed by deployments in various test dev staging environments. Next, we move into the operation side of our APIs or integrations and finally publishing to our repository for reuse and starting the process all over. This stage of publishing data into our repository is where Exchange comes in. By adding assets to Exchange, organizations can drive collaboration by empowering users with the right access to experiment, validate and continuously improve the assets and APIs through feedback. Organizations can also customize the descriptions, images to brand and curate developer experiences. With AnyPoint Exchange, users can also create auto-generated Exchange portals using vanity domains to share APIs with internal, external, and select users. Create custom roles and teams to provide different levels of access to view, contribute, or administer assets based on team needs. Test API specifications without implementation and interfering with the existing integration using a mocked service. And generate iterative tutorials with test area and documentation with API notebooks. So where does Exchange come into play? You design your API specifications or integrations first and publish it. What Exchange offers is branded public portals here. People can review and feedback if you need to make any changes to the asset for improvement. It is easy to share. It also gives an API console and notebook. Next is it gives you marking service where you can actually test before you even deploy. Client applications are something similar to public portals as well. Your client can use the assets which are published in the portal. Also, you can do a lot of versioning based on any changes throughout the lifecycle of an asset. To deploy these assets, we use API Manager or Runtime Manager. That's where you see the value of exchange between your managing and design part and how much reuse and enablement it can provide within your software development lifecycle. Now that we have discussed what exchange is and where it resides in the API lifecycle, let's now discuss what types of assets we can host in exchange. Now that we have an idea of where any point exchange resides in the greater mules of the ecosystem, let's discuss some about what you can actually host with exchange. The main type of asset that is stored in Exchange is connectors, which essentially are prepackaged connectivity to third-party systems like Salesforce or Twilio. Next, we have a set of templates and examples that allow customers to kickstart their development efforts by providing out-of-the-box sample integrations. We also offer the ability to host multiple different types of APIs, including REST APIs, defined with RAML or OAS, SOAP APIs defined by a WSDL or external HTTP endpoints. 
In addition to the ability to host entire API specifications, we also allow customers to host reusable API specification fragments. On top of this, customers can host policies that govern those APIs previously mentioned. Finally, MuleSoft offers the ability to group assets so that customers can request access to multiple assets at once. We will dig into this a bit more in the next slide. Based on the type of assets and publication methodology, there are different ways to publish such as publishing using Maven manually through UI or using a REST API to publish to Exchange. Out of these, custom assets, HTTP API, SOAP APIs can only be created manually by clicking on Create New Asset button. You can create REST API and API fragments using the same Create New button or from the Design Center. API groups can be created from API managers. Policies, connectors, templates, examples are published using Maven. Most customers use Maven along with MuleSoft. If not, you can still publish them through AnyPoint Studio and use Mavenize My Template or Mavenize My Example and then publish to Exchange. So let's talk about what API groups are. This API groups is MuleSoft's version of API products and is actually derived from a concept called API as a product, which is a consumer use case centric approach to bundle APIs to solve a specific requirement. And you can package individual APIs or microservices into API as a product by using these API groups. And it allows API owners to group the set of relevant APIs and manage their lifecycle as one product and also enables API group owners to, def uh, to define different SLA tiers and contracts for their consumers. And the consumers can discover all the required APIs in one API group and request access to the entire group with just a single click in any point exchange. These API groups can also be shared with an organization's partners and external developers through API Community Manager. Let's take a look at some of the details around custom assets. You can share these within your organization, such as announcements. It could be a documentation of how internal best practices are, or some process, or guidelines, or could be a video. You can also share these files. There is an option for you to attach a file here. Some of the file types which are supported are images, text, files, documents, and zip files. Some of the best practices are always check if the file is supported. Make sure file has a proper format of file type or extension and document the details of the file. For example, what file that is, what use case it is all about in the description of the asset and always make sure that you delete assets which are no longer valid. Let's say you had an announcement for Christmas and later you don't want that asset, right? Now let's take a look into loading assets to exchange. One of the ways that you publish to Exchange is through a REST API called Exchange Experience API. It is part of one of the assets that is provided by MuleSoft in Exchange. Using this free Exchange Experience API, you can do a lot of operations on assets like you can create assets, delete assets, list assets, and so on and so forth. It can also be used for Exchange Asset Management. The best practice is to use this for CICD pipeline. Exchange Experience API v2 is a new API version addressing major gaps between UI and APIs such as previously editing these properties required using the Exchange UI. Exchange API version 1 required uploading some of these asset types as custom assets and now you can upload them as their native types such as new applications and policies. You can now customize the portal with a logo, hero image and a favicon. Identities are a concept in Exchange V2 APIs used to refer any entity such as organization including both master and external org and the and users with whom you are sharing an asset. For assets that are large in size, it may take a while for the publishing to complete and V2 API supports async publications now. So the automation process can move on to the next step. With that said, happy exchanging. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.